Uh, a lot of folks have covered this. A lot of folks have covered the, this story about what's going on in Echo Park. Uh, we talked about it in on on Ron Placone's show last Wednesday. That's when this thing really kicked off. Was on uh, Wednesday. There were uh, people marching and protecting the homeless because there was a city council member uh, uh, that you know basically wanted the LAPD to go in there as a militarized force and uh, violently displace these people. And that's exactly what was happening. So over the weekend, you saw a lot of people um, that were uh, standing up to the police that were getting attacked by the cops uh, because they were trying to ensure that that Echo Park, the, the unhoused folks in Echo Park that live there, and have have you know created this encampment there and are and are not a danger to that community because the people that came to protest the cops were people that lived in the community. Uh, there were huge protests and sleepovers. That's one of the things that they called for. Is they called for a sleepover uh, because the 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 way they they do this is they send these raids in the middle of the night, and you know that's when the homeless are trying to do what everybody else is doing, unless you work like third shift is sleep. Uh, so they come in at two or th two or three o'clock in the morning. And then the LAPD basically brutalizes the shit out of these people and displaces them. And then where do they have to go? Right. So they have to go into these shelters, which uh, during the pandemic, but even before the pandemic, there wasn't enough room in, in these shelters to, house the amount of people that are unhoused in in all of these cities across the nation and now they have to take covid precautions in, into into place which means there's even less space for these folks to go into there's no housing first program in in los angeles in echo park uh there's no housing first program in a majority of the states uh so where are these homeless people supposed to go? You, you know, sleeping on park benches became illegal. Sleeping under the bridges became illegal. Washington, D.C., when I lived there, when I lived in Washington, D.C. for a little while, they fucking put spikes under bridges so that the homeless people can't, you know, camp out there or, or lay down a, 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 a sleeping bag or something. And, you know, so where are these people supposed to go? And it breaks the narrative that, oh, these people are a danger to society, so we're just going to arrest them. Well, they're going to spend, what, a couple nights in jail and then be back out on the streets? And then where are they supposed to go? So it always comes back to that question of where are these fucking people supposed to go, man? They don't have a place to go. But here's the here's the thing. With with Echo Park and with the, with a lot of these homeless encampments, they all have their own rules. They all have their own communal structure. Um, they also are part of the community. Meaning if if some of these people could, I'm sure they would help them be housed like the people that live around Echo Park. That go jogging or swimming or walking, they take their kids to play in the park. None of them seem to be concerned about the homeless population in Echo Park. They do seem to be concerned about the militarized LAPD that is coming to displace these people out of Echo Park. So again, the city council member who is doing this doesn't really give a shit. Because the viable solution is not criminalize people for being homeless. Uh, about 90% of them, um, not of their own volition like they don't want to be homeless they just are and they also know that the system has given up on them so they might as well figure out how to live communally and be a positive influence on that community and in a city like la which you know year round is gorgeous and beautiful uh it, weather wise anyway uh is warm is sunny it they don't they don't face what we face in the east coast and in the midwest uh, which is snowstorms and all of that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, they can be a positive influence in the community. They can, you know, they pick up their pick up trash. They can clean up the parks. 
You know, they can uh, make sure that there's no crime committed in these parks because they're, the park is their home and you don't want a crime to be committed in your home. And a lot of these people, when they talk about it, they, they oh, well, the homeless are doing drugs. I shouldn't wa have to watch a, someone shoot up in the park or I shouldn't have to watch somebody fornicating in the park or what have you. Well, OK, if that's your biggest concern, where are you petitioning the city to put housing first laws in place? Right. The I, I know Lee Camp talked about how uh, they built tiny houses. There was a, actually there was a guy I remember a couple of years ago, too, before Lee covered this story earlier this year. There was a guy that was building tiny houses for the homeless and just giving them places to live. And the LAPD came out, came down and said, oh, you don't have the zoning rights. So you have to you have to tear down these tiny homes that you built to help people. This is that what it's it's these laws are essentially the abject backwards of what society should be. They're not helping the downtrodden. They're not helping any of these people. They're making it harder for them to live. Is that what you want a government to be? You want a government? You want leadership to make things harder for the underprivileged? So before you start chastising the homeless, ask yourself that question. What kind of government do you want in place? Again, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they came out and said, oh, we'll lead with empathy. We're going to be the government of empathy. Where are they showing empathy to the people on the streets? Where are they showing empathy when they send militarized police at two, three o'clock in the morning when these people are trying to sleep? And displacing them violently using rubber bullets, beating them. And then just throwing them in prison. Where's the empathy? You want to talk about mass incarceration and how Joe Biden has a legacy of mass incarceration. Well, he's he's resurfacing that legacy. He's 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 bringing it back and he's bringing it back by criminalizing the homeless. I mean, this is this should be national news. And nobody in the federal level has said dick all about this. And the people that are covering this, like the convo couch, right? Fiorella and uh, 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 Johnny, when they went down there to cover this, they gave them shit for not having legitimate press badges because they're not legitimate press. Yeah, like CNN and NPR and MSNBC and Fox News who lie us into wars, who lie us into uh, – who lie about candidates – stealing and and fucking playing insider trading and enriching themselves while they're in public office when they lie about those people when they lie about the amount of people de dead overseas thanks to b botched uh, uh, american military operations when they lie about venezuela when they lie about iran yeah those people are credible journalists we're the credible journalists on this story Fucking nowhere. Fucking nowhere. You know where I'm getting my information from? From the convo couch. From Ron Placone. From the activists that are on the ground. From Unicorn Riot. I'm not getting my stories from fucking CNN. Why would I? I can't trust that narrative anyway. And then you gotta ask the question, why would they block those journalists? Why would they block them? Why wouldn't you want the free press to come in and talk about what's going on? Is it because you secretly know what you're doing is fucked and immoral and you're not going to have the public on your side? Like this dude uh, that's on the city council whose name I can't remember, uh, but he's a douchebag and the next election that comes around guaranteed ain't getting a fucking seat on the city council and if he tries to go for mayor or if he tries to move up the political ladder guaranteed he's not going to win because you just went against the people now the dnc machine will probably prop him up mitchell farrell uh, steve from slow news day says mitchell farrell mitchell farrell is uh um uh, and and you know th this might be maybe i'm being too extreme here but he's a punk ass bitch that's what Mitch, Mitch, Mitch O'Farrell is. These are, these are not, again, ask yourself, is this how you want a government to lead? Do you want to criminalize people that are downtrodden? Is that what you're looking for in a government?
if if that's what you're looking for, then great. Boy, do I have a government to sell you. But if you want a government led by compassion, then stop supporting the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party is not the is not a party of compassion, because if it were, you wouldn't have people like Mitch O'Farrell. You wouldn't have people like uh, uh, Mayor Garcetti or Peduto. You wouldn't have people like that. And why and and if if they were all about the free press and upholding the Constitution, they would allow these people to go in, film and interview people so that they we, we can get, you know, the actual real story about what's going on on the ground. But this story is being silenced. Nobody is talking about this except for independent media. Except for a couple of comedians and some real independent journalists. Not the fake fucking bullshit journalists that are on msnbc and cnn and fox news why are you people still watching that unless you're going there to to laugh at you know you could argue that they're doing a great form of satire on journalism but I know they take themselves very seriously unless you're watching it for satirical purposes there's no reason to watch any of these networks there is more reason to start tuning into independent media. That's for damn sure. All right, let me look at a few comments. Uh, housing First, yeah, Housing First is the Utah model, and I believe the first year they decreased homelessness by like 91% or something along those lines. Uh, shelters in New York City have limited capacity now, as far as I know. There's a lot of shelters, yeah, that, that have uh, decreased their capacity. Even in Alberta, they were talking about that. Uh, Canada has a has a law that uh, there has to be like uh, designated warming zones for the unhoused. Again, if you're going to go to that length where you have to have designated warming zones, why not just build homes for these people? Um, we could be them. We're all one paycheck away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody's one paycheck away not everybody but a majority of us are one paycheck away from you know becoming homeless but to a point where we can't afford our car car payments or our insurance payments or our rent you know steve good to see you my friend uh it was johnny uh johnny cameron and my clothes glory on the first night and then uh johnny and fee on the second night because glory was under the weather well i hope glory's doing okay uh i hope she's feeling better but yeah, these are these are people on the ground. Glory, Johnny, Fee, these are people that are real fucking journalists on the ground covering this in their cities. Uh, and we need more people like that. Uh, you know, part of what I wanted to do with this channel was to shift it over to a little bit more of a journalistic endeavor, but you know, bills unfortunately uh, have have because I have to. I have another part-time job. I'm going to have to get a th another part-time job on top of all this stuff. Like I'm, I'm unable to do so, but that's why we have people like Lori, Johnny, Fee, Steve, uh, Misty Winston. Like these are people that are doing real fucking journalism, not bullshit. You know, let's sell some soap funded by Raytheon. <laughs> empathy from the by uh, holly says uh, empathy from biden and harris what a joke remember when biden said he had no empathy for millennials yeah uh yes i do i i bring that up quite often uh because a lot of people seem to have forgotten that that's that's <laughs> what he fucking said so uh she's all good stuck for events we're holding in la on april 10th and 11th hell yeah cool i'm glad that glory's doing well i'm glad that she's doing all right uh in the USA, corporate media is state media. They're all propagandists and stenographers for the deep state. Uh, yes, they they exactly. It's it's all State Department narrative, and and the State Department doesn't want people to know that they're that they're using militarized police to go displace unarmed homeless people <laughs> living in camps, trying to form their own community. Because clearly, this version of community um, has has chucked them out. Uh, the, the capitalist system does not see them, uh, as, as valuable when they can't pay their, pay, pay their bills and all that crap. So thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button. 
hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.